Zhao, Yosho, Young Jeko. Hi, I'm Darren. Morning. This morning, we're in a suburb 14 kilometers northwest of Sydney CBD by the name of Kalara. Now, Kalara is the suburb in Sydney that has the highest percentage of Chinese residents. And the reason for that is because we have some of the best schools in all of Australia from a results perspective. Yeah. The houses here are grand, the land sizes are huge, and it really does feel like you're a million miles from Sydney, but really you're a 20 minute train ride. Right. Hey Jack, you've just mentioned that Kilara has the best HSE results. What are the schools around the area? Yeah, Kilara High School, which is a school to our right, has the best performing HSC results out of all of the public high schools in Australia, which is pretty phenomenal. Alongside of this phenomenal school, you've got some of the best private schools. You know, you've got Knox Grammy, you've got Ravenswood, you've got Epsley, just to say a few. These schools are some of the most well-educated, best performing schools. And that's, you know, got something to do with such a large Chinese demographic here yeah. because they do take schooling, I believe, a lot more serious than <laughs> you know the majority of Australians do because we generally do take it for granted. An area like Kalara, you are so close to so many amazing schools and that is why it's so popular for Chinese people. Uh, yeah, HSC is like uh, the Gaokao in China. It's like Gaokao, we're in Australia's Gaokao. Kalara is the best Gaokao level. Jack, I love this area. Like I've seen so many parks around the area. Yeah, so I, I think that's what a lot of people love about the Upper North Shore in essence is that it is surrounded by greenery. You've got many parks, you've got many reserves. We're actually bordered by the Garrigal National Park. It's very unique, consider you are only 20 to 25 minutes from CBD and it feels like the middle of the country. Yeah, countryside. They can get away from the CBD. They can have you know a really large home, potentially with a tennis court, with a swimming pool, and they're still very close to work. Yeah, that's what I was wondering, why this is low, big lands with tennis court and swimming pools, etc. Was this like a holiday house in the back in the years that people live in Sydney? Yeah, well it could have been some of that's about 100 years old. This would have been a place very far away mm. from the general CBD as such. Now people just love this suburb because of the large box of land and you know how close you are to Sydney. So greens, greens and greens. <laughs> so where are we here, Jack? Mate, we're at uh, the beautiful Kalara Golf Club, which is you know, one of the premier golf clubs in all of Sydney, and it's one of the things Kalara is most well known for. So if you're into leisure and you're into sport, you know, because Kalara is such a green place and there is so much land, you know, people love to golf, tennis, you know, all of that type of stuff that you don't necessarily get to do in the CBD. But then when we're talking about things like shopping centers and cafes and all that, Kalara doesn't really have much of that inside of the suburb. A 10 minute drive, you're at somewhere like a Chatswood with a huge Westfield shopping center that has all your cafes and your shops. Everything's really within arm's reach. So we get into the top three streets now. So I'm, I'm taking a guess now. Uh, Weddell Street, Springdale Street, and yeah, what else? <laughs> Potentially Rosebury. So a lot of the streets that are running parallel with Kalara Park generally have the largest block sizes. They have the biggest homes. A lot of them have tennis courts and swimming pools, and they generally demand the highest prices. At the moment, we're on Arnold Street, which again, you know, the average block size on a street like this is probably in excess of a thousand square meters, which is a quarter of an acre in Australia. And as you'll see, like a lot of the homes there, the Federation style, the Californian bungalow, they're generally really old properties that have kept their traditional facade and being completely renovated internally to a more modern feel. You don't necessarily have to spend five or $10 million on a home here. The, the median house price for a property, three to four beds in a decent street, you're getting something for around sort of three to three and a half million dollars, which, you know, considering the block sizes here is quite reasonable for Sydney. So Darren, 
As always, we like to finish with a finance and a buyer tip. So this week, what's your finance tip? Uh, my tip will be like when bank looking at the, the finance applications, they do a security check, they do a servicing check and the biggest assumption here is that you have a good credit file. So maintaining a good credit profile is very, very important for getting a home loan approved. If you have any credit cards or credit limits that you don't use, cancel it. And if you do need more limits in your finance, checking with financier whether this will be something that a pack for your home loan applications. So this is very important maintaining a good credit file before you apply for a home loan. And how would you go about finding out what your credit score is? Uh, many agencies can do that. We can also do a check for the clients. So we can do a Vita check or credit check. It costs minimum to get your credit profile. You can look at your credit scoring and your inquiries for the past and is there any credit defaults or uh, judgment on your credit file is all listed there. When you, you go into your credit file, if there were some imperfections and some things that needed fixing, would you recommend fixing those before you go and apply for a loan? Of course, you have to get it done before you get to into a home loan application. Right, and how much of an impact do you think, uh, I, I guess, a bad credit rating would have on your borrowing capacity and what lenders would look after you? Will be, mostly will be on lenders. So major lenders will not take any credit impaired loans if you're in default or if even is paid or not paid it doesn't matter so then you have to move to a non-conforming lender where they will be more riskier they can take the applications but on, on yourself the rate of the loan will be higher what you're saying is from a, a normal lender's perspective they won't take on a risky applicant there's lenders out there that will take that risk on pay a premium, premium. for that Correct. in your interest rate that's right. right and what is your buying tip this week yeah, so my buyer tip for this week is really about understanding the micro market that you're buying into. Kalara that we're in right now is a perfect example of that. You know, Kalara has got two sides to it. It's got east of the railway line and west yeah. of the railway line. And, and if you're something new coming to a suburb, you look at it and go, why is a house so much cheaper on the western side of the railway line to the eastern side of the railway line? And they wouldn't really understand it. And, they, and you know, a lot of people get confused because they go, well, why would I pay an extra half a million or a million dollars for a property there when I can buy one there? Um, but you know, when you live in a suburb and really understand the suburb, the premium that you pay is for a reason. You're generally closer to the amenities, the neighborhoods are nicer, um, you know, the, your, your blocks are more level land. And there's all these little intricacies that you need to understand so you can understand why there is such price disparity. Right, hope we can get all the micro stuff later on for all the audience. Absolutely, mate.